as I prepare to hand the vehicle over to the client, uh, <clears throat> a few other little things that we've done. And I want to share with you what I regard as the most important principle of all. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and then traveling to the remotest parts of the world. Over the past few months, I've been building an overland tourer for a client. I am in Australia and he lives in Germany. In this, the last video in this mini-series, I'll go into some of the details of the build as well as the cost. One of the nicest parts about building this vehicle for the client is I, I've kind of treated it as if it was my own and, and where would I put things and how would I do things and, and you know, it's a hobby. We do this every Saturday morning. I love to go in and tinker and so many of us like to do that. But a simple thing like where do you put a first aid kit? Now, a first aid kit's gotta be in the car where it's A, it's easy to get to, B, other stuff can't be thrown on top of it can't fall out and everybody will know where it is. So I thought about here, okay? I thought that if I put it here, it's a place where everybody could know where it is. And I could even put a sticker on the outside of the car. But the trouble is with here, it could easily fall out, couldn't it? So I'm gonna solve that problem by putting some Velcro, sticking some Velcro on there so that when it's there, it's always there. And if I put a sticker somewhere, everybody will know where it is. The client has been a little bit lucky on this build because I managed to find these small compartments on top of the dashboard um, and very nice for sunglasses and snacks and things like that. This particular product is made by a company called Caprivi. It's a South African product. And they actually have decided not to bring their products into Australia, unfortunately, because they're all rather nice. Designing the back here, was, it's all about access, it's all about getting to be able to get to things, to put things in, to take things out, and to be able to find stuff. So what we did is we put a platform on here. So of course, this is a loading platform, and we've got tie-down rings and everything like that. But we've also, put a hinge in so now we have two layers of stuff easy access and there it is in terms of designing the box for the client what is the what is the client gonna use all of the time every day and really the inverter for charging camera batteries it's it's easy to see when it's on because when it's on even though it might not be running anything it in itself uses e electric current so having it in the open where it can be seen and where it can be switched on and off is a good idea this is the dc to dc charger this gets quite warm that's why it's high up out of the way and it takes advantage of the car's own air conditioning system to stay nice and cool as it charges the lead crystal batteries uh, fuse box e easy to access switches for the tent and interior in in here and some power points but the and of course the battery monitor mm -hmm. Most important part about this, of course, is serviceability. Now, this particular client is going to be parking his car up for six to seven months at a time. It was important to be able to turn everything off. There are two circuits to turn off. One is the inverter, which is on a separate heavy cable circuit because it can potentially take a lot of current. So it's on a separate circuit. And one other switch inside here. Once those two are off, the entire electrical system is disconnected from the battery. Another thought on the selection of battery and battery charging systems. The beauty of DC to DC means that we have not had to cut a single wire in this entire vehicle that was put in by the manufacturer. Not one, which means it can't possibly affect the reliability of the vehicle itself and of course warranties. One cable goes from the battery to the DC to DC system. And now this part of the, 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 the battery system that runs the camping side of the vehicle is autonomous. So when we turn it off, it's isolated. It's completely isolated. And it's a good idea if you're parking up a vehicle for a long period of time to actually put a maintenance charger onto the main battery. And when I say maintenance charger, I'm talking about a specific battery charger designed for maintenance, not an ordinary battery charger. Because an ordinary battery charger, that even a trickle charger, will and could possibly eventually damage 
a vehicle by uh, a vehicle battery by overcharging it over a long period of time. So the selection of the charger for when the vehicle is sitting is very important. It has to be a maintenance charger. Those of you with keen eyes would have noticed that the vehicle actually was supplied new with a air a raised air intake. And why did we change it? Well, the Toyota raised air intake it has a, a cyclonic air filter which basically as the air goes in it's spun as it spins the larger objects are flung out so it pre-cleans it to a degree before coming down the pipe and you might think that is a good thing and it is the penalty however is a bit of engine performance not a lot but a little bit but the main thing is that those standard uh, air intakes are not watertight so in other words they cannot be used for deep water wading so there is a trade-off here you get a bit more performance with the this kind of um, intake but you don't have the cyclonic cleaning abilities of it but you do have the ability for it to protect the engine in the event of a deep water crossing so we made that compromise I selected for the client a Snowmaster, it's a 57, it's a dual door fridge freezer, it's actually exactly the same one as that I have in my troop carrier and the most important thing about selecting the right fridge is to ask your mates because there's so many fridges on the market, in fact I've done a separate video, it's about, a little bit about the history of fridges in vehicles, these 12 volt compressor fridges, because we haven't actually had them on the market for more than about 15 or so years. I like the double door, both can be run as fridges, both can be run as freezers, it's very versatile and the reason why I like the Snowmaster brand will be in that video that I will release. And is, as far as the packing system is concerned, because it is caged, things won't fall on the fridge and, and it's, it's always easy to access the fridge without any hassle at all. That's why we did that. The cargo barrier now allows me to pack anything in here. I can fill it up. Without it, I can pack nothing in here virtually nothing because anything that is put here is going to fly forward but here a it's keeping the occupants safe in the event of an accident nothing is going to move from here to there and cause harm and it is more than doubled the usable space in the back of this vehicle so if I'm ever asked the question by somebody with a station wagon type vehicle, how do I increase the load capacity of my vehicle? I will always tell them, you put in a load barrier. The wheel carrier I chose Kmar because I think they probably have the best reputation. I didn't know too much about the product and I'm actually quite impressed with it. I like the finish. But the question of course is, do you need to carry two spare wheels? Well. If you're going in very very rough country and if you're traveling on your own then yes and it doesn't matter how strong the wheels are it's an insurance policy really and you know so many of these modern tires are so strong and they're so good and you know punctures are not what they used to be they used to be very common not anymore but it's still a really nice insurance policy to have two spares hanging off the back but probably the best reason for getting the tire and wheel off the door is the door itself these things can break now the Toyota's better than most but Land Rover Mercedes-Benz Galanderwagen the doors eventually fall apart they cannot take that weight hanging off them now it is true that not all of us have got this kind of money to invest in a build but the principles all stand. So whether we're making a packing system out of off-cut plywood or buying one here like this, the principles stand. But how much did this build actually cost? Now there's a very good reason why I don't generally put prices on my reviews and things like that because A, many different people from different countries watch my show and secondly this and this is the big one. People will take the figure from the video, go into a store and say, ah, but this. 
This is not an advertorial for the builders of this truck. It's not an advertorial for me or the equipment suppliers or Quick Pitch or ARB or PDP or AFTJM or it's not. So you can't go to them and say, Andrew got it for so many dollars. I expect it for the same. So, so please don't do that because it'll be embarrassing. Mainly for you. So these prices are a guide and I, they're, they're, they're rough actually, pretty rough, but you'll get an idea of a build, what a build like this would cost. And now for the most important principle of all. It's, I call it the principle of most flexible and least flexible. Now what you need to do is when you start a project, any project, be, whether it be a small one of just adapting something or buying a vehicle from scratch, you have to go through a process so you can understand what your requirements are. These requirements are yours, they're nobody else's. You're not proving, you're not, you're not doing it for anybody else. You're not doing it to show off. You're doing it, what do I personally selfish need from whatever I'm doing? And you do it using a piece of paper, a computer, doesn't matter. And you write down a list of items in your project. Least flexible, most flexible. So for example, a least flexible might be uh, you've got a two-seater vehicle and you're now going to be traveling with your family. You need to turn it into a four-seater. So least flexible is four seats. It becomes the least flexible item and it goes on top of the list. I'd also like a fridge between my, my seats, you know, front seats, so I can lean on and get a, get a cold drink while I'm driving. Least flexible, most flexible. What is it? Where is it? Where does it sit? If it's down at most flexible, well then if you don't get it, it's not a big deal. It's a brilliant way of, of for any project, I'm not just talking about vehicle builds, I'm talking about anything in life. The least flexible, most flexible process is an absolutely brilliant way of getting what you want. I actually started the business of building vehicles for people when I was still living in South Africa and uh, it was quite close to the time that I left South Africa so I actually built two vehicles there. I built my own troop carrier, of course this troop carrier and so this is the fifth vehicle to carry the proud name of Autograph Overland. That's what I called myself and I'm now going to apply the sticker to this vehicle. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be making a direct comparison between this Land Cruiser, the Land Cruiser 76 wagon, and the Land Cruiser 78 troop carrier. Join me then.